Hey, this is Brock Ramirez, and in this video, I'm going to cover how to convert decimal numbers into the IEEE 754 floating point format for single precision numbers, or said another way, 32-bit floating point numbers. Okay, so when you want to convert decimal into floating point, you can think of it as six steps. <clears throat> this is the way that I think about it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take the decimal number and conv convert it into a fixed point binary representation and that basically just means you have the the point the radix point and you convert the whole number to the left of the point and the fractional part to the right and you're given a binary number then what you do is you convert that into binary scientific notation so that you move the radix point over so that there's only one bit to the left of the radix point and you're going to have an exponent then you determine the sign bit then you determine the biased exponent then you determine the mantissa with implied leading one and then at the end, you combine all three of the results from steps three through five into a final 32-bit binary number. And when you're done, you'll have this long string of ones and zeros that you will know contain three different fields, but uh, only you will understand <laughs> what they represent. <laughs> okay, so let's do an example. We're going to take 22.125 base 10, and we're going to convert that into a single point, uh, I mean, a floating point single precision number, okay? So let's begin by doing the following. I'm going to write down, I'm going to write down my number here. So I'm going to say, 22.125 base 10. And I want to first convert this into a fixed point binary number. So this is kind of going back in the past and saying, how do you do this? Well, first thing you want to do is you convert the whole number separate from the fractional number and let's just do the the conversion manually just to remind ourselves we don't we're going to be switching back and forth between decimal and binary a lot uh, so a lot of the times we won't do this manual step but just to remind ourselves how to do it so the whole number you take the 22 and what you do is you divide it by the base that you're converting into so in this situation it's divided by two and then what you do is you record the quotient and you record the remainder and then the remainder is going to be the least significant bit of your binary number that you're going to get okay so 22 2 goes into 22 11 times and there's no remainder okay and then you take the quotient move it down and you're going to divide that by two and so two goes into 11 five times with a remainder of one and then you're going to take five down and you're going to say two goes into five two times with a remainder of one and then you'll bring down two and you'll have two goes into two one time with a remainder of zero and then finally you'll have one and you'll divide it. two goes into one zero times with a remainder of one and you know that you're done when the quotient is zero because you can't go any further and then you're you're essentially done with the conversion and that is now your msb okay so that number now the the dot okay, i'll write it down here the dot you've converted 22 into one zero one one zero Okay, so that's 22 in decimal and it converts to that. Okay, so now let's convert uh, the fractional component into binary. And the steps we use here, if you recall, is you basically, you take the fraction, one, two, five, and this time you multiply by two, the radix you're going into. And what you do is you record the product. And then I'm going to use W just as a notation for, you record the whole the whole number of the product, okay? So let's see what that means. So two times 0 0.125 is 0 0.25. And then what we do is we say the whole number is recorded as the binary number. And that then in this situation is the MSB, okay? And then what we do is we take only the fractional number only the fractional component, we bring it down and we multiply that by the base, okay? So we go 0 0.25 multiplied by two and that's going to be 0 0.5 and then again what we do is we take this and move it over and record the whole number and that's the next bit in the the binary number and then we take the five and we move it down and you go 0 0.5 multiply that by two and you get 1.0 and so in this situation you go okay there you go and that's now one and then notice that this is now a zero so that means you're done 
Okay, so that's our binary number for the fractional component. And this, of course, is your LSB. So then I move that down here. And what I get is I have most significant bit is 0, 0, 1. Most significant bit is right here, just like uh, the most significant bit is here for the whole number. Okay, so that's step one. We have now the, the fixed point binary number. All right, so now step two is going to be put this into scientific notation. And what I mean by that is that we're going to move this radix point so that there's only one bit to the left of the radix point multiplied by an exponent. And it's going to take the form of some number times 2 raised to an exponent. And this is going to be our mantissa. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so let's move this thing. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. And what that means is that I can write this number as 1, let's switch back, I'll keep it red here, 1 dot 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, Let's make sure I got this. 1.0110 and then 001. Okay. Let me make sure I got that right. So I've got a zero here, one one, zero 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 one. Okay, zero 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 one. Yeah, that's right. It, you, I kind of get confused sometimes because I always forget about these fellows over here. But yeah, that's going to be all part of the number. These are all significant bits. And then you go times two to the exponent, which was how many times we moved this. So one, two, three, four. So that's four. This is now binary scientific notation. This is the same number as that. It's just that it's in scientific notation. Now, why did we do that? It's because we allowed the decimal point or the radix point to float over here. So we encode where the radix point is within the larger number, okay? All right, so then three is gonna be, this is the easiest one. It's determine the sign bit. Okay, so the sign bit is basically 0 equals positive, 1 equals negative, and you have to do this. It's a step, so there's it, there's no negative sign up here, so it's positive. So that means the sign bit is 0, okay? That's, that's the easiest one, right? Okay, so now, now let's take a look at the next step. So let's move over to step 4, and now this is where, let's see here. So we're gonna move over just a little bit and we'll probably put this on one page. So let's go to step four. This is gonna be finding the biased exponent, okay? Now you say, what is the biased exponent? Well, remember the exponent that I have is four, all right? But in IEEE 754, they do not, they have to have exponents that are represent positive and negative numbers, but they don't want to use two's complement encoding as the exponent code. So what they do is they shift the numbers with respect to a bias so that the number you have sits within zero to 255 uh, so that it's like an unsigned number. But then again, remember, you cannot use zero and you can't use 255. So the range is actually one to 244. But simply said, you, you essentially add a bias to this of 127, and then you get the biased exponent, which is 131. And this is base 10, and that's your number, okay? So that is the biased exponent. So then what you need to do is you convert that to binary, and this is what's gonna be stored, okay? So then I'm gonna convert that to binary, and I can do it using all this, the same steps I did before, but I'll, now that we know how to do it, we can just write it down. So I'm gonna go, it's one, zero, 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 one, one, base two. So let's think about this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight bits in this, and that's because the range, I didn't mean to write 250, this is 254 right here, the range, right here can be encoded with eight bits. Now, that's pretty cool because that's actually what's gonna go into our number. So we have we have a couple of the numbers. We have this guy right here, and now we have this guy right there. All right, so let's go to the next step, which is going to be, this will be step five, and this is gonna be the mantissa. <laughs> uh, mantissa with the implied one. And now what does that mean when it's implied? This is, it's actually really simple. Uh, if you come over to here, this is, this is the mantissa, right? So it's the mantissa is what exists 
uh, separate from this fella right here, the exponent, okay? But we have an implied one, meaning that we know that when we do the scientific notation, this is always gonna be a one. To the left of the decimal point, or the radix point is always a one. And that's because if, if you had a number like this, and you're like, well, I could put the radix point right there. You wouldn't do it. You never have leading zeros. So you'd always move the radix point so that's over here. So since we know it's always gonna be one, IEEE 754 said, you know what, let's save the bits and let's give ourselves more precision within the mantissa. Having said all that, all it simply means is that you take this number, what's to the right of the radix point, and you move that over to here, and you get 0, 0110001. And you're like, well, I have a, a whole bunch of bits in here, right? So I need to get 23 bits. Well, this is the beginning of the mantissa. And what you do is if it doesn't repeat and you're done, you basically just fill this with zeros. Okay, so you fill that up until you have 23 zeros. Okay, so these trailing zeros don't have any effect on the number. Okay, so here's the last step. You are going to put the three fields together to form the 32-bit number. And so what it looks like is this. I'll switch back and forth between red and blue so it's obvious. So you're going to have the sine bit, which is zero. Then you're going to have the biased exponent, which is going to be this fella. So it's one zero 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 one one. So that's that. And then you're going to have your huge mantissa, which is zero one one zero 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 one and now that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three not all the same size but these are this is bit zero up to bit twenty two and this is bit twenty three up to bit thirty and this is bit thirty one this is your thirty two bit floating point number encoded in IEEE 754 that represents the decimal number 22.125, okay? Notice that it is not very obvious what that number is, okay? It is not, not obvious what that is because there's so many bits, but it's that's okay, right? We build the circuitry to encode and decode these numbers, okay? So you did it, that is awesome. Okay, so we have a result, and one of the things I want to do is I want to check this, okay? So we did this manual conversion, and you, you never do these conversions manual. We just do it to learn how to build this, the circuitry or the algorithms uh, behind the scenes. So I want to check this, and I want to do it with a couple different ways. So I, go ahead, I went ahead and left my number right there. The first way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use an online solver. There's, there's tons of base conversion solvers out there that exist. Uh, I went out, there's one at ultimatesolver.com. Uh, and this one has uh, the ability to enter in a decimal number and then get back the 32 point IEEE 754. So let's go, let's see if this solver gives us what we think it's going to give us. So all I need to do is come down here and go uh, 22.125 and let's go ahead and convert that. And it works for a while and I come down here and it gives me my number in floating point. So, and it's kind of nice because it separates the field. So it's got zero as a sign bit, that checks. And then you got one, zero, 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 one, one. And over here in our answer, we got one, zero, 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 one, one. Okay, we did it. And then on the mentissa, we have zero, one, one, zero, 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 one. So zero, one, one, zero, 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 one, and then all zeros. So, we did it. This calculator proves that this is actually working. However, the calculator is software, so it's like, well, maybe there was an error in that. So here's one of the things uh, I think is, well, one of the things I did was I went out and I uh, grabbed some code that converts uh, a float into a binary number or the binary representation in C. And this is a program uh, that I wrote where I can enter a floating point number, which is, you know, 32 bits. And this is actually in C where it encodes the number on real hardware. So this is a Linux server. And then what I do is it prints back the numbers and I can see what the computer hardware actually did. So this is really a computer calculating this. So I come in here and I, I do my number 22.125 and here it is. So I print it out and and it gives me the sign is zero. I get one, zero, 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 one, one. So I got that. And then I get zero, one, one, 
zero, 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 one followed by zero. So, okay, I have a second data point that says my conversion was correct. And then finally, I have this other one uh, where I went out and I, I used Mo or I used VHDL and I created a test bench that uses this package called the IEEE float underscore PKG. And that's actually the implementation of the IEEE 754 standard in a hardware description language so that you can actually build real logic circuits out of it. And I have a test bench where what I do is I basically feed in a real number, 22.125, and then in my system, I go ahead and I use this package and it has a conversion called to float. And I can actually see what the IEEE 754 hardware or conversion would be in, in a logic simulator. So if I come in here and I run the waveform, it's like, okay, so here's my outputs. Kind of hard to see, but you see 22.125 was the input and then I get zero, one, zero, 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 one, one. So I got the exponent and then I get zero, one, one, zero and then zero, zero, 001, and then all zeros. So I have three data points that show me that my conversion was right. One of them was a software algorithm that somebody wrote for an online converter. The second was the actual bit stored in a computer on a Linux server and printed out for me. And then the third one was the actual IEEE 754 package that's included in VHDL that actually shows what it should be. The reason that's important is because this is a relatively simple number and it's simple because because there's an app absolute value okay there's no rounding there's no error in this but once we start looking at numbers that do have rounding and error it's really interesting to see what the computer does versus what the algorithms does and you start thinking about rounding and error and everything like that but the the end result here is that we did it we converted decimal number 22.125 into a 32-bit floating point number using the IEEE 754 standard nice work all right see ya